Hi everybody, welcome to Comfort TV. Hey guys. Brought to you by Hobby Japan, and uh, this is episode 98. 98, Sid. Yes. We hope you guys enjoyed episode 97, which is our Gumplex Expo footage. We had great fun. I, I that was really a lot of enjoyed fun. it. There was a lot of good stuff there. It was, actually, you said it was a very good show. It was a very yeah. good show. Uh, Bandai looks like uh, they're bringing their A game next year. And uh, it looks like Ryan, you're going to be building a oh, Zoid. Oh, Zoids, yes. Um, so I'm going to be doing this guy. <sighs> this is a lot of work for this guy. Actually, I looked at the manual. It's. If I mean, I'm looking at the box. It's pretty heavy. Oh, yeah. Ryan is a I don't do boxes. <laughs> I'm a desk jockey. Yeah, yeah so we had to do the Raven Custom. Yeah. Um, we had a Facebook poll. Yeah. I mean, there were a million comments on YouTube as well, but it was like on Facebook, 126 to 55. Yeah. But so people have spoken. But people have spoken. Ryan's I will do a Macross ways. kit at some stage. Okay. Um, I had a look at the manual. Um, it looks like a pretty straightforward build. It's just if I want to paint it. Yeah. And stuff like that. But well, just take your time. Uh, I don't think you're going to get started until after episode 100. Probably not. Probably not, which is so... Speaking of episode 100, we got to talk about that because... Oh, yes, 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 yes. It's our big 100th episode. And uh, we're starting to prepare for it. We're really busy right now, but we're st still working on some stuff. And we are going to be giving some stuff away. Yes, um, and you'll be required to do something. Yes, but don't worry, it's not that difficult. No, no, no. All we expect you to do, it's basically, we want to see your face with your favorite kit, whatever that kit is. You just put a, a photo on our Facebook Hobby yeah. Link TV page, and uh, we'll compile a big album. Gallery. And then we'll just choose the winners. Now, there'll be some, like, PGs? What yeah, something? we're going to give away a PG Gundam, we're going to give away a big monster Zoid, and we're going to give away some other uh, smaller kits. To uh, just random winners. There's no like, oh, yeah. if you get the best picture, then you win kind of thing. It's just, just show us a picture of uh, yourself with your favorite kit. You know, you see our ugly mugs every week. Yeah. So now we get to see yours. No, I'm not insinuating you're ugly or anything like that. No. I prefer it. And please, if really, you really have a clear thing. photo of your face, no yeah. crazy. Yeah. You know, but get creative. You and your Gundam. Yeah. You, know, you and have your some fun. Macross kit. No, yeah. yeah. And please remember to post them on Hobby Link TV yeah. in the. I guess, Probably I don't know like Facebook. what section. Facebook. Just slap it on her wall, right? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then I'll grab it and put it into a separate album and I'll yeah. keep that locked to the top of the site. Yep. And, and uh, we will announce the winners in episode 100. Yes. But episode 100, the date we're going to release that is not decided yet. So yes. So you have some time, but don't leave it to the last minute. It was at the moment, we're particularly busy we with the Christmas packing really and all busy. that stuff. So um, bear with us over this next three to four weeks. Yes. We'll yes. be sporadic. Episode 99 will come out when uh, the new Gundam is here, because yes. I want to do an episode specific to that. But after that, there's going to be a gap. You know, we have the end of the year, we have Christmas, we have New Year's, and the and the Shogatsu, the, you know, the, the holidays that start at the beginning of the year. And once all that is taken care of, and we, we catch up, then we'll, we'll put out the 100th episode. And I might be a, a daddy. Yeah, somebody's expecting in the next couple of weeks. So. Yeah. So that's all 100 <laughs> live. <laughs> yeah, that'll be cool. That's mm, a million no. views right there. Very all um, right. Okay, so is everybody got that? <laughs> yeah, and you and yourself with your kit. The, the, uh, in the description under the video and on our, our blog, there'll be more about the competition. Yep. So you can check out that. And we will show the kits that we will be giving away next episode yes. at least because yes. uh, I'm waiting for a couple things to show up. Sweet. Okay, so speaking of showing kits, uh, the RJ Zeta. Zeta came out. It came into our warehouse the same day we were at the expo. Yes. So I didn't get to show it then. So I'm going to show it today. With the Zeta, you know, you, of course it's a real grade, and you're going to get the, uh, this frame, a real grade frame, and it's actually quite a bit different than all the previous real grades, but that is, of course, because this guy is meant to transform. So you see that, you know, these things here, this is the arms, and uh, the real funk, sorry, this is the leg, this is the leg frame, actually, and this is the arm frame here. So the arm frames aren't too different, but the leg frames definitely are. And you have a couple of these little goodies here, and these are actually uh, what holds that... Uh, the big monstrosity backpack onto the back. I'll show that in a little more, more detail later. And you're getting, uh, you know, the runners. You get this uh, blue runners here. These are mostly for the arms, so you get two of these, one for each arm. And uh, these two uh, framed runners here, well, these are mostly for the legs, so you get two of these guys. You also get uh, the monster marking stickers, as well as this frame runner here, which is uh, used for the torso. And uh, for those who pick up the, the Zeta right away, well, you get this book, The Real Grade, From Birth from birth to the Future. And they're only in number 10, but you know, the future. So uh, 
gives you gives you a basic uh, rundown of the the real grade line. There's some nice pictures in there, but it's not a lot of stuff we haven't seen. You know, they got shots from the videos that they've released as promo material. Yeah, a little explanation about the RG. And uh, at the very end there, they show you the line art for, where am I? A line art for, the, you know, this guy, the Destiny, which is gonna be number 11. We showed that at the show, actually, they had that poster, so you can see. We got a design, we got the new real gray, we already know which it is. And now the Zeta, it's different as we mentioned from the other uh, RGs simply because of transformers. And uh, I want to talk a little bit about the transformation because I've actually uh, gone through it. I've got my Zeta and it's uh, Wave Rider mode. Okay. And uh, uh, we're going to talk a little bit. I'll actually put it back into its, uh, into its mobile suit form if I can while I talk a little bit about it. And you can see that you know these guns, they just kind of snap on here. And then this thing actually can fold in and out. And uh, yeah, it, uh, it took a little bit, I can't lie. One thing that I did find is that uh, difficult is that these, uh, the wings here, the side armor is actually supposed to plug into the shield. But to get that, it takes a little bit of work because uh, the only thing holding these, these on, sorry guys, are uh, parts of the of that really funky movable frame and you have to like move these things out of the way and then move them back so I'll show you this if you can get a close-up shot here now when you do a master grade uh, and you start using these frame pieces that transform the pieces are hard for the most part they're uh, hard plastic and uh, when because of how the master grade is designed there's not a lot of flex so when you put things in the proper place you feel they feel very solid but with the uh, real grade, it's that uh, flexible frame that features lots of joints molded into it. And uh, when you start moving it around, trying to get it in the right spot, you feel this resistance. It's kind of, uh, this tensile strength of it is, is different. It tends to uh, bounce back at you. So you have to be very careful when you push it around because these are still prone to stress and breaking. But uh, I find the easiest thing to do is just to take them off until later. And you can see that they are actually... Uh, this little ball joint in here is actually uh, what allows you to spin them around. But it's easiest just to take them off when you're doing the transformation and then worry about them later. Because if you do stress and break this, these frame parts, uh, you know Bandai has a parts replacement service but any real grade frame, if you break a piece of that funky frame, you have to in order the entire runner to get a replacement part. So please be careful when you're playing around with it. That's what I had in mind the entire time. So as you can see, this is the, the Zeta here. And uh, it looks kind of similar to, I think, uh, the, uh, the Rezzle in its transformation. With the way the, the head drops in the center of the torso here. But with these uh, side armor pieces and how they connect here, they're, they're more often than not kind of in the way. But fortunately, you can kind of take them off and come back to them later. Let's put them here. And take this guy off too. We'll worry about all that stuff later. So, pull these arms back. Come on. There he is. And uh, if you can see this funky little joint here, you actually have to move it in several different directions to get to get it right back into its proper spot. Luckily for me, I've played around with this a bit and kind of know where it's supposed to go. For the people who have not done this yet, you gotta be careful. And I just broke the arm off. All right, sweet. Oh well. <laughs> well, when I was, uh, this is actually one thing I wanted to mention. When I was building this and it said you had to tuck the arms in and I folded the arms in like so, like I thought I had them. And then when I had to put this part around it, to push it into the center. This always felt like it was in the way. Like I couldn't get it closed. So I was pushing it down, pushing it down, pushing it down. And then I finally got click. I got it click into place. And I was like, you know, I hope that arm is okay. Cause I did see some stressing there around that joint. And I kept saying, oh, I hope that arm is okay. And of course, now that I, I come back and I uh, go back, I noticed that it's not, it's not okay. But you know, I can fix that easy enough. Um, 
It's kind of similar to the very, very first real grade when they made uh, the, the leg joint on the RX-782 and people would just bend the, the leg. Oh, I'm just going to bend the leg. But they would hold the, the wrong part as they bent the leg and that it, little sliding piston inside, it would break. Everybody broke that on their real grade. And I, I was uh, kind of concerned that I would see the same thing happen with the Zeta. Okay, so put this down. Just be careful that your antenna, be careful that your antenna doesn't get jammed in there. Even the manual says, be careful of the antenna. Because if you do get it caught in there, it's going to be very difficult. Stay put. Don't move. There he goes. Dicta. And once uh, once that this is over the top, then you can push the torso back up. So let's get this back up here. The engineering is insane. Yeah, I mean, on the one hand, like I said, it's it's kind of odd because the frame is so flexible. You're worried about you're worried about it, but mm -hmm. at the same time, like the stuff it can do, <laughs> is pretty pretty impressive. And also at the price point, like you get a fully transformable yep. Gundam figure, basically. And then just still all the detail, you know, you still have the uh, the multiple color armor pieces to show off all the, the detail and panel lines. You can see this V-fin is actually made to open and close, which is uh, quite a feat considering its size. And then what I can do after I have everything here is just, you know, slap these back into place here side armors and whatnot you are supposed to be up here we're back unbeknownst to me actually we were uh, pretty short on time with that remaining tape on that uh, cassette <laughs> so uh ryan had to call me off halfway through so i muddled around with it uh while he was replacing the tape and i'm i'm pretty much finished you can see i'm gonna just uh, get this foot back in position here now the one thing i want to mention about the zeta that i think is excellent is that they have this little tab at the back of the foot here. So when you're standing it up, it might seem a little uh, wobbly, but you can just push these down and it gives it that extra support. Huh, and yeah, cool. it's actually it's actually really, really good. And uh, the shield, well, it can go on the arm like we know and love here. There it is. And now all I gotta do is just make, make sure I get another frame piece here in the mail and then uh, just fix, fix the arm. I kind of anticipated that I might break something, but I was hoping it would come at when I was disassembling, preparing for painting, and not when I was making video. <laughs> All right, there it is. So yeah, here's my little, uh, here's my little Zeta. I wonder if I can get some, get it to stay still just for video. What do you think? I think. No, you have, it's a fail. Well, I'm gonna yeah. fail. Oh, oh I fail. So kids, be careful. <laughs> more, more of the story. <laughs> I always tell people when they're going to play around with the real grade that uh, before they put any armor pieces on that they move the joints around and loose them up. But this one's meant to bend like two different directions at the same time. So I obviously made a mistake. And it didn't help that I was applying pressure during the transformation. I couldn't see what it was going to. But yeah. And you were under pressure on camera. You know. Well, you know, I, spent, I was like, hurry up, sit, hurry up. I think I spent four, uh, 30 minutes or more doing the transformation to the Wave Rider just because I was trying to make my, uh, take my time and get everything proper. So when I showed it on video, it looked good. And then, uh, of course, I was told that we only have a few minutes to video today. So anyway, I'll leave it at that and we'll go to the next safe, next step. Okay, Ryan, now uh, we got some questions. Yes, we do. We've had actually, you know, several weeks since our last episode. So while we don't actually have time to answer everything in this episode, because I'm supposed to be in the warehouse right now packing stuff, uh, we'll do a few right now. Yeah, yeah, this is just a few. Okay. Uh, yeah, there's a ton on the, on the YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. And yeah, feel free to, you know, reply to other people if you know the information. Yeah. You know, polite, friendly. <laughs> no trolling, manner. no arguing. No trolling, no blaming. Okay, this is from uh, Christopher Novio. I think this is from Facebook. Mm. Hi. I just watched your video about spray paint and I'm thinking about building an MG Gundam heavy arms. I was wondering about the color changing of the torso. You see the torso mm -hmm. is orange, but I want to change it to red. What color primer do I use to, to do that change it, to change it? 
please write me back and thank you, Christopher. Okay, Christopher. Well, basically, there's only really two colors for primer: white or yeah. red, or white or gray. But if you're spraying something like red, I don't think it really matters. Uh, red is quite a bit darker than gray or white, especially that light gray of the primer. You could go with either one, and I think the red would turn out no problem. Yeah. Yeah. Next, uh, Ryan and Sid, I love watching your videos. I just subscribed to your channel not long ago. Sweet. I was wondering how do you glue the headlight of the Aventador? I've built a few of the Tamiya cars and keep on getting haze on the high headlight due to the cement. Mm -hmm. I also having trouble gluing the tail light as the paint is messed up by the cement. Hope I get a good tips from you. Recently, I started to build Gundam and I need to sh ship my orders from your warehouse soon. I wish I can go to Japan and visit you guys. That's from Adex309. Yeah, if you want them by Christmas, you guys should have seen. <laughs> uh, actually, uh, I haven't yet to show my finished Aventador, but I know what he's talking about because I've also done the, the headlights. And I know the hazing he's talking about concerning the glue on the clear part because I've also experienced that. And I did my best to actually uh, place the glue in the frame of the, uh, the, the car on the edge inside so that mm -hmm. when I put the headlight cover on, the glue would not actually get onto the clear part, but I was not successful. Okay. So, you know, you have to be very careful in place, placing the glue on the edge so that the, the headlight goes in flush, instead of just putting it on top of like the, the chrome piece and putting it on that way. But would I you, failed in that regard on one of them, I think. Would you mask the light? No, no, no. Well, if you paint it. It's tough, like, yeah. um, the chrome of the, uh, when I was putting the headlight in, I was going to talk about more of this when I talked to the event door, but when I put the headlight in, uh, that piece is chromed. So I actually had to uh, take my knife and I scraped away all the chrome plating mm -hmm. from the area where I was going to put the glue. And I got that in, but when you have to put that clear part on, like, there's, it's clear, like, you're going to see if you get glue on it. So you have to, like, put it on this very thin edge okay. around the outside and hope that you don't do too much. Okay. And as you'll see later, I probably did too much. Okay. And yeah, the rear tail lights were also a pain. Let's talk about my pain and tribulations <laughs> with the Avenger next time. Uh, Ryan and Sid, I enjoyed watching <coughs> the episodes some more than once. I tried to pick up techniques you guys talk about. Thanks, mate. Question, mm -hmm. what do you think about the recent expansion of home 3D printing relative to Playmo in general and uh, Gumpla in specific? Do you think it will change how kit bashing goes? Thanks for all for all you guys do for the community through this channel and your website. And he has the craziest username I've ever seen, L-P-A-C-Q-N-D. We had actually talked we uh, chatted about, about this. Uh, 3D printing. I was, looking, I was looking into it because mm -hmm. I think they're about one to two thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know how it works, but I think for, uh, geez, what do we call those anime kits that people build? The resin kits? But they're just uh, garage builds. Garage builds, the yeah. uh, bootlegs. I think it's it's going to change the it industry. It could a lot. open the door for a lot of bootleg stuff. Yeah. But I mean, at the same time, like this guy's talking about kit bashing, and say you you're building something. Oh, I want to include the launcher from this this yeah. Gundam rather than ordering parts from somewhere or buying the entire Gundam. If you have somebody who you know has scanned that part or it's on a database somewhere, you could technically print it out on your 3D printer. And who knows, maybe in the future, like Bandai will actually sell the 3D files as that a way to make... Like, that would be a cool idea, but it would involve a Japanese company being somewhat progressive. <laughs> <laughs> so we might be a ways away from that. Yeah, because, I mean, you have those laser scanners. Yeah. And, I mean, you could pretty well knock off a kit pretty quick. Yeah. And these days, bootleg kits are pretty much done by yeah. taking the runner and making a, your own mold of the runner and then injecting your plastic into there. But a 3D printer, if you just have to laser scan it, Actually, this is, I don't know if this is off topic, but when planning to move to the moon or send people to the moon, they're actually looking at using 3D printers to like sculpt earth rock or moon rock yeah. into tools and stuff. So I think it's going to be an incredible technology once it's there. Yeah, once, well, the, it's basically a teleport. Yeah. When you think about it, like you don't, you're going to move this solid object and you're going to have a version of it over the other side. Like, it's like digital downloads, but it's going <laughs> awesome. to be crazy, yeah. Yeah. honestly. But uh, yeah, if anyone yeah. else has more to say, just yeah, just grab, jump on the comments. Yeah. I'm interested to hear it. You know, you lock yourself outside of your car. <laughs> oh, what am I going to do? <laughs> You're at the office, you call your wife and she th 3D laser printers your, uh, your key <laughs> and you get back in your car. I hope people are even printing guns, yeah. which is crazy. Yeah. yeah. 
I think we're going to see a lot of uh, issues when it, it starts getting cheap. <laughs> People are doing some pretty interesting stuff. A little, yeah, it'll change a lot of things. Okay. But uh, let's just get on to... Back to plan. Saturn, Saturn 69. Saturn Siton. Ryan. Siton. I notice when you guys spray paint, you don't have a mask or an infiltration system going on. He had a mask. Yeah, he had a mask, didn't he? Well, yeah, yeah, with you guys being involved in models so often and semi-frequently using spray cans, aren't you worried about cancer or something serious like that? If I was worried about <coughs> my health in general, I probably wouldn't leave the <laughs> lifestyle that I do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, well, I, sp I always spray outdoors, so you could say it's ventilated very well. And I always yeah. spray with the wind in my back, so it's yeah. pushing away from me. So I'm not necessarily endangering myself, I think. Yeah, no, to be honest, I don't think I do it enough, mm -hmm. you know, and I always do it outside. I always try to wear a mask. I think if I did it every day, like, oh, yeah, like clearly. hardcore modelers. Yeah. yeah, yeah. we definitely have to, we'd have a spray booth and everything else set up. If you got the spray booth and the ventilation system, you're using masks, you're using all that stuff. And Brian, uh, he uses a, a, a booth and he says it's so effective at sucking everything out. He doesn't even smell anything and he's like 10 centimeters away. So, mm -hmm. Unless he's totally destroyed it. Sorry, so <laughs> from all those years of modeling that guy's done. Well, someone next to me in the office, I won't name names, it's not said, uses okay. like that glue spray inside and I had to tell him. Because <laughs> he didn't notice? I'm like, yeah, you should know better. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay, so that's it. Okay, that's it. Um, I think we got yeah, video. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna leave you with some footage that we extra footage that we have from the Gunpla Expo. We didn't edit it down. We didn't do voiceovers during those sections because it was just too noisy half the time, or we weren't able to sync up our audio, or people were pushing us out of the way while we were trying to get this video stuff. But uh, we're gonna throw an extra on this episode so people can see. Yeah, there's, there's some, some very beautiful stuff. kits in there. The new builder. Yeah, just remember we're on uh, YouTube, Facebook. We have a blog. Yeah. Please comment. We really appreciate all the great comments about the show and what we do. And my tank, I got a lot yeah. of love, a little bit of hate, but mostly love. It's awesome tank. Yeah, <laughs> that is sweet. And uh, show us your picture with your favorite kit. Yeah. Remember. All right. We want to see your face. And win stuff. Free yeah, stuff. Everybody free, likes free stuff. Well, kind of. Yeah. Got to do a little bit of work. And still free. Uh, if you don't have a digital medium to put your picture on, then yeah, I'm sorry. But you're watching this video on YouTube, so yeah, you, you must have, have a computer. So all right. Yeah. No excuses. No excuses. Okay. <laughs> See you later. See ya.